already? So we know that hamsters that we see in the pet shop are common everyday pets. Yes. But they have an extra sorted life in the wild, so they didn't just emerge as pets out the blue. They, they were brought into captivity in 1930. Wow. So they were captured in southern Turkey and northern Syria back in the 30s and brought into captivity. And all hamsters that are in captivity now are descendants from a single brother-sister mated pair that came from that wild population. So all hamsters in pet stores and in labs, everybody, they're all descendants from that brother-sister pair. Wow. So, so for every little kid out there who's had or has a pet, they're absolutely related to their neighbor's exactly hamster. Exactly right. <laughs> so if you had a hamster as a kid and your kids now have hamsters, they're related. Oh my. Oh my. So what were you doing? I see the name in your paper is effects of predator cues on daily activity patterns. So in there, so they're still real native wild hamsters? Not many of them. They are actually IUCN red listed as, the, as endangered. Okay. So they are endangered, however, the local, they live in agricultural fields and the local farmers don't really care that they're endangered. So there's a lot of um, rodenticide placed in the fields to get rid of not only hamsters, but gerbils and other, other rodents. So like rat killer here, yeah, they put it exactly, out there? Exactly. Okay. So they're doing their best to get rid of the rodents because they, they consider them to be pests. Okay. So, and they're not protected, so nobody cares that they're doing that. But they live in a very, very small range, so the population sizes are extremely tiny. Oh. So, well, so who are their predators in the wild? Um, uh, we have seen fox and owls. We've actually recovered hamster skulls from owl pellets. Okay. They make up about 6% of an owl's diet, is our guess. Um, so fox, owl, white stork, raptor, snake, domestic cat. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> And, and maybe domestic dog, but we don't know that. So, assuming in a, in a natural condition, how do they how do they respond to predator cues since that's what you study? Well, that's a good question. We really don't know what they do in the wild. Because okay. They're, they're above ground so rarely that, and for such short periods of time in general, that we don't really know what they do. We've never observed a direct hamster predator interaction in the wild. Okay. So what did you do here? You gave them like just little odors? Right. Well, so what we did here was we, in the lab, and if you've had a hamster as a pet, you know that hamsters are strictly nocturnal. They're only okay. active at night. And what we've actually discovered is that in the wild, at least the females are active at day, during the daylight. They're diurnal. Okay. And so what I'm trying to do is to figure out why that's the case, why there's that difference in behavior between the wild and the captive. And so this particular study is testing the hypothesis that nocturnal predators are diminishing nocturnal behavior and promoting diurnal behavior. Oh, okay. So at least, so if we can find the secret in the wild while they're diurnal, we can solve families' nighttime Maybe. dilemma here in the state. Maybe that's true. If you want to, if it turns out to be predator pressure, you want to bring a fox into your house. That's or a little fox owner, and they can make mom and dad happy. Exactly right. So everybody can go to bed. Exactly right. Thank you so much, Misty, for being on Urban Science Adventures. <laughs> All right, Thank then. you.